the sin Had no hope, had no peace within But somebody told me what Jesus did Said he gave his life Died for my sins and now I'm justified And I'm sanctified I glorify his holy name Come to Jesus, come to Jesus right now
praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Amen to our bishop on this afternoon, the elders, the ministers, Sister Patterson, our founder's wife, Mother Elsie Mason, our jurisdiction and supervisor, Mother Leella Smith, the chairman of her advisory board, Mother Wells, the chairman of her missionary board, Missionary Hawkins, the women of God on this another Women's Day, then all the saints of God. I magnify and I praise God for blessing me to be in the number one more time. It's an honor for me to present our speaker this afternoon, our own First Lady, Sister Louise Patterson. I've only known Sister Patterson for a short period of time, but it seems like I've known her always. But then saints have kindred spirits. Sister Patterson is one of the most elegant first ladies I've ever served under. Yeah. Hallelujah. But the thing that impresses me most is that her elegance is from the inside out. She, she's rooted and grounded in the Word of God and is manifested in what she says and does and in the way she carries herself. She's a great inspirational speaker. Whether she's talking to the teenagers and young adults about thin dimes or to the women at large, giving practical exhortations for everyday living, like prepare to get old, or to the pastors, elders, and ministers' wives on how to conduct themselves as preachers' wives. I've even seen the little children run up to her for hugs. My observations tell me that she has a rapport with all ages. And then to all of us, she's a prime example of how to smile, even when you don't feel like it. How to walk straight, even in pain. How to hold your head up, even when others talk about you. To walk as becoming holiness, to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Indeed, it is an honor for me to present such a woman today. Let's stand as we receive our very own First Lady, Evangelist Louise Patterson. God bless you, saints. Praise God. I am so glad that Jesus lifted me out of sin and shame, Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. <laughs> Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. Hallelujah, that's my testimony on today. He missed a soul that he thought he had. Hallelujah, and all of that came from simply hearing the Word of God. Praise the name of Jesus. The Word of God is powerful, powerful enough to reach down, save a sinner like me. And I praise God on today for salvation. If heaven never was promised to me, it's been worth having the Lord in my life right down here. And I praise him for it. You all may be seated, but when I feel it, I feel it. Praise God. I don't have no manner or form or whatever, but I'm just glad today for God, for his goodness to us in the earth. I praise God today for our pastor. Without our pastor, I would not be here today saved sanctified, satisfied, filled with the Holy Ghost. On my way to heaven, can't help it if you mad. I'm on my way and don't intend to let anything hinder me. 
because I'm enjoying my trip. I'm not going because I'm scared, but I love the Lord with all of my heart, with all of my might, with all of my being, because he has been so good to me. Amen. And I pray right now that the Lord will allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be acceptable unto him. I stand before you, I have no form, I'm not a great speaker, but I can sure enough testify to the goodness of the Lord. Because he has been so good to me. Would you help me sing, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm, if he lifted you, let us know it. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Oh, Satan had me bound. But Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound. Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God when he lifts you. He lifts you high above your circumstances high above any hindrance because he's our God and he undergirds us with his mercy and with his help. We can call on him. He's a very present help. Hallelujah in the time of trouble. And I heard him say to me, Lou, I am with you always. Hallelujah, even until the ends of the earth. Now I made that personal to me. Now you can call your name, but to me that scripture says, Lou, Louise, I am with you always, even until the ends of the earth. God promised us that. He said I'd be with you in your sixth and in your seventh trial. I knew what you were gonna go through before you got that. I bought you out before you knew you were delivered. Hallelujah. Glory be to God, and I love him now, and I praise him. He's been mighty good to me. Saved me when I was on my way to hell in style. Amen, I wasn't ragged, wasn't down and out. But there was an emptiness in my heart. Something was missing. Glory to God, God built this house and he left a room for himself. I didn't know about that room until I walked into Holy Temple Church of God in Christ and found out what would fill my house. Hallelujah, and the Spirit of God filled my house. Taught me how to live. Hallelujah, in this present world. Taught me how to walk right. Taught me how to talk right. Hands that stole, if they stole, don't steal no more. Put a do right spirit down in me. You don't have to watch me. I'm saved everywhere I go. Hallelujah, praise the name of Jesus. Every time you see me, Glory to God, and I praise God. I couldn't keep myself. Amen, thought I was cute. Other folk thought so too. Amen. But it doesn't matter what you have, you don't have nothing if you don't have Jesus. Glory to God, you don't have nothing if you don't have Jesus. He's my everything. I trust him for everything. I love him with my heart. Bless the name of God. Glory to God. Now I just feel like praising God, but y'all help me praise him. Hallelujah! For your mercy, for your goodness, for your great love shown, for your word, for this place, for your people. Glory to God, I praise you for being God all by yourself. Praise God, you lifted me up high. Amen, and I thank you for every blessing, for every pain, for every ear word spoke. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Now you all might be seated. And that might be the best thing y'all gonna give it. The show did make me feel good. <laughs> Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel good, saints. Glory to God. But you know, it's not enough for me to be saved when I know there are some people in the house that are not saved. And it is my prayer today that I will say something that would bring somebody to this altar crying, what must I do to be saved? That's what it's all about. We get good preaching here all the time. I think my husband, my dad, and my lover, my pastor. Hey, my love, my boyfriend. Hey, Amen. I think he's the greatest preacher in the whole wide world. Bishop G. Patterson. Praise God. Praise God. I love him. Because he's real, real, real good to me. Amen. He goes beyond being good. Amen. And I love him for it. He's always been like that. Even when my allowance was $50 a week, he was good. A lot more than that now, so he's real, real good. Oh, well. No brag, just fat. Praise God. I thank the Lord today for my two sisters being here. Certainly for Supervisor Leella Smith, she's not at her church today to come here to back me, and I certainly appreciate her. Then I'm Mother Smith. Amen to missionary evangelist Mother Mary Hawkins. Amen. Both of them are fine women on the field for the Lord. They are doing great things, and I certainly honor the women who work with me and to those of you who have participated so well on this year i am very thankful to you and i ask that you pray for me as i try to say something that would bring some soul to christ and uh i do hope you read uh, the little letter that i had written inside of the bulletin because it has a lot to do with what i'm going to attempt to talk about and if you did not read it i'll read it to you I say, dear saints, my heart and prayer for the Temple of Deliverance family is that they might be saved. As we look with great anticipation to the new millennium, changes are inevitable. Therefore, we must be prepared to accept the challenges with courage, run the race with patience and determination, keeping Jesus in our view and heaven as our goal. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Pause if you must, but don't stop. And I'd like to put emphasis on that. Pause if you must, but don't stop. Amen. That's what the enemy would have us to do in any race that we're in is just to give up. I am, I guess, supposed, I'm, I'm like everybody else, we are just excited about the new millennium. That's what everybody's talking about, the new millennium, the new millennium. All on TV, they are preparing big parties for the new millennium. What are you going to be doing in the year 2000? What are you going to be doing? And the sad thing about it is that so many of the saints are fearful. They're saying the Lord is going to come. Well, that's what I'm living for. Even so, come Lord Jesus, I'm not afraid. Amen. Y2K, Y2K. Anytime you say Y2K, people just shake, especially if you're like me, you don't know very much about it. We just quiver. Fear enters naturally into things that we don't know. I picked up a book in the grocery store, and it said 50 things that you need to know to be ready to go into the millennium. And they talked about how you should travel. They talked about how to put water downstairs and to hoard food. And they addressed things about your computer. And of all of those 50 things that they mentioned, they didn't mention a thing about getting prepared to meet the Lord. And that troubled me. Because I think we are so caught up into the hype that we have forgotten 
that Jesus Christ is coming back again. Amen. Amen. We have to prepare ourselves for his coming. Now, there are two things I think that would get you in readiness, and that is if you believe that it's a heaven and it's a hell. Now, if you don't believe it's a heaven and hell, then maybe what I'm about to say won't interest you. But I believe there's a heaven, that's why I'm trying to get there. And all the things that are promised about in heaven, I look to see. I want to walk on the streets of gold. I want to see Jesus. Amen. I want to be able to, to go to a tree. And if I'm sick, which I won't be in heaven, but they say it's a tree up there that's good for the healing of the body. And I want to see just how Jesus is going to just take, he, how he just wipes all the tears away. Those are some of the things that I want to see. There's nothing about hell that interests me, but hell is real. Now, if you don't believe that, you just go right into the Bible, and you're going to read about a man that went to hell. And, you know, we like to say, well, I'll go on down to hell because I'll find so-and-so down and we'll have a ball. Hell ain't going to be like that. And you have nerve enough to name the folk who you think going to be down there. But those folk who you think going to be down there, they're trying to get themselves together. But we have this little picture of what we think hell is going to be like. But it's an e you're in eternal torment when you're in hell. Hell was so bad that the man down there wanted to come up from down there to tell his brother, don't come here. This is a bad, you don't want to come here. So we've got to prepare ourselves for one destination or the other. I'm going to try to enlighten you about the destination that I envision or I'm going to, and that's heaven. Now, to get to heaven, you've got to prepare yourself to do anything. We prepare for college exams. We prepare for weddings. We prepared this morning to come to church. But sometimes we come to church and we come just out of form, and we are not too interested in where we are going. That's evident. We leave before the message is over. We are disrespectful during the service because somehow or other we don't believe that this is God's house and there are certain ways that we should be in here, if that's certain things that should be carried out while we are in here. So as you prepare for heaven, You've got to know your Bible. That's your guide. That's the way you're going to make it. You're going to have to study that book. You're going to have to meditate in it. And then you're going to have to be like the person that it talks about. And that's Christ. We know that he was a man that had no sin. Neither was any guile in his mouth. He died that we might live. And all we have to do is just get the book to learn how to be like him. Well, just like your natural children that you have, if you have children that don't look like you, you're going to think something is funny. I don't care how they go back and say, you know, John Henry looks like his great, 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 great daddy. Dad is not going to feel so good if John Henry doesn't look a little bit like him. Amen. So if you don't look like him, you need to fix yourself up. You need to look into the book of the Word, and it will show you where you are lacking. It's sort of like self-examination. Mirror, mirror on the wall, do you see Christ in me at all? That's what some of us need to say. Mirror, mirror on the wall, do you see Christ in me at all? Woe is me. I'm a man, I'm a woman of unclean lips, and I dwell in a place with unclean people. You know that. So God has given you the privilege to examine yourself. And when you see where you are short, then you come on up. Because it is not the will of God that any of us should perish. He wants all of us to be saved. He died for our sin to make us righteous in him. So it would just behoove us to get into the book. That's your tool, to study the book, to learn the way to get from earth to glory. God's people should be holy because God's word says that he is holy. He was sinless, yet he died for the sinful. 
He wants us to not only be saved ourselves, but he wants us to share the word. Go ye into the highways and hedges and compel men to come. It's not enough for you to be saved and nobody else is saved. When you go to meet the Lord in, in heaven, hopefully you will have a soul that you are going to bring with you. Because when you get there and it's nobody but you, then I'm afraid the Lord is going to kind of charge you with being slowful because you didn't do what he charged us to do. So in preparing yourself, you're going to have to be saved. You're going to have to accept Christ. You can't just say, I'm going to clean up what I messed up and start all over again. That's a nice song, but you can't do that. You can't clean up what you messed up. Because no matter how you try to keep it straight, if you clean it up, you're going to mess up. I remember, and I can talk about myself a little bit, I remember when I smoked. That's been a long time ago, so y'all, I haven't backslidden since then. If I did, I wouldn't smoke. Amen. But I smoked, and I would tell my mom I was going to quit smoking because it would make me cough or whatever. And I said, now, I want you to give me one cigarette today. Just give me one. And if she, after I smoked that one, if she didn't give me another one, I just got mad. I was trying to do it myself. Give me my cigarettes. And that's the way you do when you have habits that you cannot control. Now, I'm not the only one in here that went through that. Amen. I'm not the only one. But I'm saying it so that you can be helped. You cannot. Self-reformation will not do it. What? can wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We were redeemed not with anything uh, uh, co uh, corruptible, but we were redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We were all debtors to the devil. He had us all in his clinches, but God saved us, and he saved us to reach others. All right. I remember before I was saved, and the reason I'm so on sharing the gospel, no one really told me about being saved. We had saints that stayed in our house, but no one ever said anything about being saved. Mother Mason, I bless you on today. So happy to have you with us, because a part of our theme is just say yes. Why yes? That's the theme of the church, yes, Lord. When you say yes, it means everything I have, I forsake for you. Yes, Lord, I'll go, I'll do what you want me to do. Yes, Lord, it's a song of total surrenderance. We sing it just to be singing it, but when it gets down in you and you start internalizing that and realizing what you say when you're saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, endow me to say yes. Yes means that I'm committing my way to you. We don't like to commit ourselves. We'd rather rent than buy. We'd rather shack than get married. We'd rather visit a church than to join. Why? Because there's no real obligation. But when you accept Christ in your life, you are obligated. You will have to live holy. Be holy for I am holy. When you get to know the Lord, then you don't fear the unknown like some are now as it relates to the millennium. I don't fear the unknown because I know the all-knowing God. And I know that if I'm in him and if he's in me, then I don't have anything to worry about. We don't have to fear as those who have no hope because our hope is in Christ. But you're going to have to learn how to submit yourself to the ways of Christ and not do it begrudgingly. I'm afraid now the day we live in, everybody have somewhat of the prodigal son syndrome. Everybody's at home looking out, at home looking out. We don't have enough gall to go out like the prodigal son did. He went out and wasted himself away from home. And I'm afraid many of us are wasting ourselves right here in the church. Our children are unruly. The scripture tells us to train them up in the way that they should go. But we don't train our children. And that's evident 
when they come here and their actions portray the fact that they have not been trained. Amen. It's left up to you. Women, we have a great part in the work of the Lord, a very great part to play. Men, we have something to say. Women, the men have something to say. We are living in a time when the enemy has put that split between men and women because the women are so heady, they don't want to hear, and the women are so independent that they don't want to hear. But that was not the way God planned it. He planned for us to work together as a unit. And when the enemy comes in and split us up, then he's the one that's victor. I did not write the book where it says, wives, submit yourselves. I didn't write that. But what's wrong with submission? It just means you just give in from your will from some of the things that you want to do. What's wrong with that if that promotes peace and harmony in your house? What is wrong with that? If God says submit, then we submit. That's why your children are unruly. They see households with two heads. A two-headed household is not a household that has its, its reign, Jesus Christ. I have a problem with saints having to divorce. If you have nothing in common and both of you call yourselves saints, you have Jesus Christ in common. You should be able to come to grips with whatever your differences are because brokenness trickles down. When your unit is broken, then the children are broken, and then their children are broken. It's a syndrome that God is not pleased with. It's a syndrome that God is not pleased with. We are in this race to win. We are running for our lives. The scripture says you did run well. What hindered you? What's hindering your race, your run with Christ? Are you going to let something as narrow as having your own way be something that would hinder you? Get into the word of God and let it dictate how you should walk. And do you know you will find yourself not finding the task so hard if you know that's what God wants you to do? He's there to remove every mountain, every obstacle, every hindrance in your life. We are all going to have shortages in our lives. Always, there's always going to be something lacking in our lives. I don't care how fulfilled a person is, there's something lacking. And the thing that I love about the Word of God, if you get into his book, he has situations that you can identify with. Most women, the greatest thing that they could give their husband is a baby. Most women. But we have examples in scripture of women who found themselves grievous in spirit because they had not given children to their husband. Being a woman myself with no children, I know how that feels. You feel like you've shortchanged your partner. You know, it's not anything that he may say or do, but it's some way or other that you feel like you've let him down. But in scripture, God gives us to know that children are heritage. They come from God. He gives life. And in the scripture, there are so many women, one that I'm really reminded of that I think touches the heart of many women, and that was the Shunammite woman who simply just was good to the prophet. She let the prophet stay in her home, and in doing so, he prayed for her to have a child, and we know how that child died, and how when she should have been frustrated and all been out of shape, she went to get the prophet after the son died supposedly from a heat stroke. The responsibility was laid on that woman. He was out in the field with his dad. 
Women, we have a responsibility that men cannot feel. He was in the field with his dad, but what did his dad do? He brought the baby to mama. Mamas have a nurturing uh, trait about them that men don't have. This woman didn't get discouraged because she knew the prophet. And in route to getting to where the prophet was, and they ask her, how you doing? She says, it's well. Can you say it is well when things are not well? Well, we speak through the eyes of faith. And in the eyes of faith, that woman felt like if I can get to the prophet whose prayers bless me with this son, then I will be all right. So what did she tell the driver? But drive and go forward. That's what we've got to say when we meet obstacles. Drive and go forward. Because she felt when she got to her destination, it would be all right. We have got to learn how to trust God for and in everything. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But when you say yes to the Lord, then you know that everything that's torn down, he will build it up. This woman had said yes to the Lord. And what did the Lord do? He restored her son back. Faith. And this is the confidence that we have. That if you ask anything, he'll give it. Faith. I have a little song that I, a little analogy that I use when I'm teaching the women on Sunday nights. There was this lady, they say, that had real short hair, and the other lady had real long hair, and this lady had so much faith. The lady was combing her hair, and she was singing, sweet, low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Lady didn't have no hair, but she had faith. She got that comb. I ain't got none, but I will have some. I ain't got none, but I will. Look, David, play on your heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's what it's all about. It's about seeing those things that are not as though they were. Stand firm on God's word. It will not fail. Study it. Meditate it, meditate in it. It will get you from earth to glory. Don't let the devil fool you because you do not know God's word. The scripture says you do err not knowing the word of God. Do you know the devil will sit right in here and make you think that you are not good enough to be saved because of your past? And then a lot of us claim salvation and still haven't forgiven ourselves for some of the things that we've done in the past. We allow people to remind us of things that we did when we were in the past. Now, I would simply tell them, if God forget it, you might, if God forgot it, you might as well. So the devil would tell you that you are too bad to be saved. You've done too many bad things to be saved. What's our example in the Bible? David was an adulterer and a murderer. And all of the beautiful psalms that you read were penned by him. Simply because he repented. Create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit in me. So God can use a repented murderer. You are not too bad. You were tricked, and somehow or other, you found yourselves out in the world selling yourself for somebody or even for yourself. However, you feel dirty, and you feel unclean. You feel that God will not clean you up. You know what the song says? Jesus will pick you up if he has to reach way down. He will pick you up if he has to reach way down. People won't pick you up, but God will. Evidences of that are in the scripture. Rahab, the harlot, she's in the lineage of Jesus Christ. She was a harlot, but she recognized the men of God when they came to our house for her to hide them. And she made them promise that her household and her family would be saved. 
Now, it was something about that woman that was discerning. And she was a loose woman. They, she could have thought they were coming there for whatever she supplied. But the Lord did that as an example for those of us who feel that we are too bad. If you feel like you are too bad for God, you are just right for him because you are the one that he died for. It would not make sense for God to die for a righteous person. He died for the sinner. Mary Magdalene, the woman of whom seven devils God drove from her. Seven devils. She ended up being one of his disciples, one of his devout followers. If I make no mistake, she was at the tomb upon his resurrection. You are just right for God, sinner, if you're in here. Maybe I didn't call off whatever dilemma you are in, but don't let that hinder you. You are just right for God. He died for you. It was not the will of God that any of us perish. He wants us all to come into the everlasting life with him. Paul, one of the greatest writers in the book, persecuted the saints. But when Paul decided to say yes to the Lord on the road to Damascus, where he was persecuting en route to do harm to the saints, the Lord got his attention. When the Lord gets your attention, you say yes. No, I'm not where I ought to be. He'll have to clean you up, and it takes a little while. And in doing so, you're going to mess up. But when you mess up, get up. Start all over again. <clears throat> Don't wallow there. Get up and start all over again because God is merciful. It is the mercies of God that we enjoy. Man is not merciful. He'll hold it over you. That's why we are, God, we are glad that nobody is God but God. One of the greatest evangelists in the Bible, we know her as a Samaritan woman. And I think many times, the scripture does not give names simply so that you can put yourself in that situation. This woman was at the well getting her water. And when she saw Jesus, she probably thought he was just another suitor. He said to her that he, the water that he would give her, she would never thirst again. She said, evermore, give me this water. And that's what our prayer should be today. Evermore, give me this water. It simply means that he would be her sufficiency. He would be all that she needed. When he got through talking to her, she was so excited. The word of God should excite you. She's excited. A speaker shouldn't have to get up and just go all hog while the word of God, Jesus taught the word of God and people were saved, healed, and delivered. He sent his word, he spoke his word, and thereby things happened. This woman was so entrenched in the conversation of this man who simply asked her woman, where is your husband? She said, I have none. He let her know she had five. She didn't dispute that. But it just baffled her that this man knew all into her personal life. And what would we have thought about that had we seen Jesus talking to what we call a prostitute? We would have felt like he had no business talking to her. But that's why he came. It was for this cause that Jesus came into the world to save the world. The scripture said Jesus must needs go to Samaria. Now, you know, that made me feel good. Because I feel like when I got saved, the Lord must needs to come to Holy Temple Church of God in Christ. 1254 Wilson Street. Amen, January the 22nd, 1964. He had to make a house call, a church call, and he came to get me. Amen, I was a wretch undone, not like the Samaritan woman, but I was unclean. Many of you might not be like the Samaritan woman, but unless you have accepted Christ and his way of life, you are unclean. You're not ready. You're not prepared. You might not lie. You might not steal or do any other things, but if you have not accepted Christ as your Savior, 
you won't be there. Amen. You will not be there. What did this woman do? She was so excited, just like you were when you first got saved. You know how you were. You went to tell everybody what had happened to me. I know I went to work. I worked in an office, and I went in and I told them, I said, guess what? I'm saved. And, you know, I was a great witness because the office where I worked in, I was the life of that office. I'd go in every Monday morning and tell them what a good time I'd had all the week. Amen. I'd tell them what kind of dress I had or whatever, when I was just sassy, just sassy. But when I got saved, they thought it was just going to last one day because, hey, when I got saved, I got real saved. Amen. I, be, I, used, I would go to work walk to work, and I mean every car on that street would stop because I'd be looking good. <laughs> I'd be looking good. After I got saved, honey, <clears throat> you're talking about cleaning up. <laughs> I took off everything. I was going, I was wondering, you know, why I guess my posture was different because I wasn't getting that same response. But that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Amen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Yeah. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Yeah. And I just like to feel like that holiness was just beaming out. Yeah. And I went to the office building, and we were talking about the Holy Ghost. I said, well, i tell you about it. If I don't get it, it ain't nothing to it. Now, wasn't that foolish? <laughs> wasn't that foolish? And I had everybody in the office waiting for me to get the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Bishop had a 30-day revival. I was there every night seeking for the Holy Ghost. I didn't know much about the Holy Ghost coming from a Methodist church, but I knew how I wanted to get it. I wanted to have on, if I had on a red skirt, I'd have to have on a red slip, because they always got in the floor, and I wanted my stuff to be looking good. <laughs> Amen. Had long fingernails. And I went to the church, and Bishop has always been a man full of wisdom. He said, you go get somebody whose spirit is kindred to yours to pray with you. I felt bad because there wasn't nothing trying to get the Holy Ghost for children. And back then, if you didn't get the Holy Ghost an adult, they said you were sinning. That was the reason you didn't get it. But I tell you, I prayed and I tear it and I tear it. But God knows you, sister. God knows you, brother. He knew what it would take for me. At the end of a 30-day revival, the very last night, I still hadn't received him. The devil didn't want to let me go because he knew once I got the Holy Ghost, I would have that power that would keep me, that power to talk about God. Never will forget it as long as I live. Bishop looked like he had preached so hard. And he sat in his seat. Sister sitting behind me, the Lord was healing her. And she was simply saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your seat partner is contagious, saint. When she said, thank you, Jesus, I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the more I began to thank him, my hands went up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And it was as if there was a, a, a stained glass window in Holy Temple's window. It was if that when I lifted my arms all the way up, that's why we tell you to surrender, that the Lord himself, hallelujah, hallelujah, the Lord himself just reached down. And before you know it, I spoke in tongues. Everybody in the church knew I spoke in tongues. The Lord took me to a place I've never experienced it before. But it was like I went somewhere. I didn't know where I was. I could see what was going on. I knew the people were around me, but I was not mindful of them. And when I got up on it, I had the Holy Ghost. Bishop came over and said, Sister Dowdy, what happened to you? I let him know I had the Holy Ghost. Now, this, this is going to help somebody. Bishop and I, we were going to lunch at that time every day, and ever since I've known Bishop, he has been a man of God. But I had got so deep. Bishop said, I wasn't talking to him. What? He said, Sister, there's something wrong. I was just in the deepness. 
You know, if you don't watch yourself, you'll get, you'll get carried off into something crazy. You know what I'm saying? I had got it and I was just so holy till it wasn't real so holy I couldn't help nobody else. Amen. But guess what happened after I received the Holy Ghost? I didn't know the bishop had said to Mother Wall. Mother Wall, raise your hand. Told Mother Wall right there that he had me in mind to marry. But he wanted me to be saved on his ministry. I had gotten saved on his ministry. Now, I didn't know all this now. And that he wanted me to be baptized on his ministry. I didn't know that either. And to receive the Holy Ghost before he asked me to marry him. Now, don't you know the devil would have used me had I known that? I'd have bah, 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 long before. The Holy Ghost is real because I spoke in tongues. And I praise God for that. That woman was so excited, she went back to those men and said, come see a man. Come see a man that told me everything that I've ever done. And that woman became a great evangelist. God knows how to reach you where you are. Praise God, and I love him. I love him. I love him. And I'm concerned about those people who are content without having the gift of the Holy Ghost. Time for people to come down who don't have the Holy Ghost, we leave out of the church. But you are going to need him if you intend to walk this Christian way. And this book that we study from is so intricate in your walk, you need to read it to your children. I'm concerned about our children. The Bible tells you to train them up. You need to let them see you on your knees in prayer. You don't have to worry about praying in school. They need to see you on your knees. You need to have family prayer. The Bible has been set in order, and it tells us what to do as it relates to our children. Women, we are losing our men. I have nothing against you being educated. Nothing against you being independent. But I have a problem when you have to do that and have a boyfriend instead of a husband. You can live, say, without a husband. I'm not saying that but it's much easier because the war that we have is with flesh. The war that we are in is a war between the carnal and the spiritual. That carnal man will try to take over every time because we were born in sin, shaping in iniquity. You don't have to tell a little child a lie. He'll just lie. That's his nature. He quiet somewhere in a room, you, J. Moke, what you doing? Nothing. And you know he's doing something. So it's not too early for you to train your children that liars will not meet God. It is not too late to tell your young girls how they should be with their so-called boyfriends that you all let them have too early. Amen. They're growing up too fast. And I know, we, we, I know where we headed for, but your children headed for hell because you're letting them grow too fast. They need to know that it's in vogue to be chased. You don't have to run with the crowd and lay around. You don't have to do that. If he wants to lay, make him pay. Get some marriage license. That's right. That's right. Don't let him abuse you like that and then go out and so-called get somebody who's fresh and clean. It's left up to you parents. Mothers, you got to be mothers, not girlfriends. Amen. 
you got to let them see you over them. Now, I know I'm going to get in trouble now. I know I am. But I'm having a real problem with these mothers who have daughters. I mean, and it's evident they're in their teens. They wearing their little short dress, and you wore yours long, and now you start hiking yours up. What's your problem? What is your problem? Your children will have to see a difference. Tell you in a minute, my mama don't do that. You know what I'm saying? It needs to be where they can come to you and say anything. But you have got to be a person who keeps the standard up. They're going to go through stages. They are young folk. That's why the Bible says flee youthful lust. The young girl, she's going to feel herself. You know, she cute. You know, I'm going to let everything show. But you don't try to match her and let yours show too because yours don't look good as her. Don't care how, better not let you lose weight. Don't care how much weight you lose and how good God bless some of us to look as we get older. There are still some things about you that show your age. <laughs> your knees don't look like her knees. And your other parts don't look like hers. There was a woman in scripture who was given a great challenge. Her name was Esther. We know her as a woman that saved her nation. But it wasn't until Mordecai and her uncle let her know that the dilemma that they were in, that if she didn't do what he asked her to do, she would go down with him. So what did she do? She got her a plan. First thing she did, she fasted and she prayed. Women, and I say women, I mean men too, but by this being Women's Day, I tend to be a little prejudiced toward the women. You're gonna have to do some fasting and some praying. This is praying time. Seems like nobody's happy in marriage anymore. Come to church, he's sitting on the east, you sitting on the west side. Sit together in church. What's wrong with that? This woman had a plan. She prayed and she had all the handmaidens to pray. And her plan was that she would invite the king and the very man who was supposed to help get rid of her nation, her people. She invited them to dinner. She knew that she could not go into the king except he summoned her. But she went anyway. That's the kind of courage that this woman had. And apparently, the king must have really loved her and it had to have been in the will of God that she was the one that he favored. Because even the people that had to fix the, the virgins up before they sent them into the king, she found favor with them. And she was the one out of all of that harem of women that seemingly the king was fond of. And she went in to the king and he asked her, what do you want? I'll give it to you up to half of the kingdom. Now that's a powerful woman. Yes. Women, we have the power. We've just got to know how to use it. We have the power to bring our households back together again. But you have to have a plan. Stop griping so much. He knows his shortages. He knows yours too. Stop being a, what the scripture calls a contentious and a brawling woman at home. This woman had her plan together. And three times she went, I think it was three, into the king and let him know, I just want to have dinner and you bring Haman with you. And Haman felt himself so uh, part of, of the 
of the king's business because he was invited in with Esther and the king. But you know what her plan was? She fed him good. What am I saying to you ladies? Ouch. First, I'm going to say ouch. <laughs> Bishop said, if you can't say amen, say ouch. So I say ouch before I say this. This woman cooked up some good meals. And I believe that that's where we kind of got this saying, wait till a man's heart is to his stomach. And I say to you women, there is still power in the pot. There is still power in the pot. Amen. You can be ever so amorous and so whatever, so loving and whatever with your husband. And after you've been amorous, if you had a good meal, he'd say, honey, where's that chicken? Where are them chitlins? Where are them greens? He's not going to be so concerned with anything other than that good meal that you fixed. I'm saying something to you. Some of the old ways that we've forsaken is the reason that we don't have our homes intact. I know it doesn't sound good because I eat out every day myself. But my husband likes a whole lot of different kinds of foods. So we eat in a whole lot of different places. <laughs> well, you just got to know your own man. That's the way that go. But I'm saying, if you want to make home home, you need to have it where you sit down together and eat dinner. You shouldn't have to eat in shifts. Amen. You sit down with your family and let them see that family environment. It's a job that we will have to undertake women. We have a grave responsibility, but God has given us the key. And I know from the beginning how the Lord meant for it to be. He meant for us to walk equal with men. But because Eve was so curious And her first independent act was a bad one. We are in the shape that we're in. So since we are here, let's make the best of it. Amen. Amen. Now I've got to wonder, and I, I really hate to say this, but I've got to wonder why was Eve somewhere out walking? What was she looking for? I mean, the Garden of Eden supposed to have everything that, that she wanted. So what was she looking for? But my next question is, where was Adam? Why, how come he wasn't with her? <laughs> where was Adam? How come he didn't go with her? And I have to ask him, why did he eat that fruit so readily? Look like he could have said, I don't want none. Then we wouldn't be in the shape we're in. <laughs> Amen. He listened at that woman. Sometimes we have good things to say. Can you imagine what would have happened if Pilate had listened to his wife when she told him she had a dream for him not to bother that man, Jesus Christ? Can you imagine what it would be like? Job, a righteous man, he had sense enough not to, not to listen to his wife. But men, sometimes we have something to say. We have something to say sometimes. The song that says, I'm strong, I'm invincible, I'm woman. We don't want to be strong. We strong sometimes because we have to be strong. We don't want to be strong. We want you to come on in. We love you. We want you to come on in and say, sit on down, honey. You don't have to go to work. Don't you, lady? Sure you do. We just, we just took on all that stuff because we had to. But we are ready to relinquish it today. <laughs> Amen. I think when things are in order and in place, it's harmony. And I thank God for the way 
And I hope that I've said something that just kind of touched you to make you want to continue your walk with God. And the one good thing about the walk is that it doesn't stop here. That's the good thing about it. We are running for our lives because we have a better place than this to go to. We are going to a better place. To those people who we say are physically challenged or whatever, and you say, well, I can't run. You run with your mind. You keep your mind pure. Keep your heart pure. Amen. Your victory is in the purity of your heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. God knew what he was doing when he made man and woman, but he made them to be a unit. Now, everybody's not going to be married. So if you are not married, then you owe your life to the Lord. Single women, because you don't have a husband, you owe your life to the Lord. You belong to him until you accept a mate. He will be. He said, I will be your husband. He said that. And we hold him to his word. He does not intend for any of us to walk like we don't know where we are going. He does not intend that for women. He made women. We, and he made all of us for his express glory. He made us to glorify him. We can't give him glory if we are burdened down. We can't give him glory if we are bogged down with things that we don't know what to do. But once you say yes to him, he will give you abundant life. He'll be to you what you let him be. If you abide in him and his word abide in you, you can ask what you will and he'll give it to you. He'll give you the courage to face the challenges of the day. Each and every day he'll be there for you. He'll give you the faith to walk into areas that you feared. He will take away the fear because perfect, the perfect love of God cast out fear. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. He's God all the time, therefore he's good all the time. His grace and mercy is present all the time. When you say yes, heaven is your home. Amen. It takes patience to get there. Your patience possesses you your soul. He's quick. He'll be there when you need him. You can rest in him. He's our strong tower that the righteous run in and they are saved. Amen. You can trust God. He won't let you down. Many times we intend to do things that we find ourselves unable to do. But God has never made a promise that he did not keep because he's a God that cannot lie. He cannot lie. If he wanted to lie, he cannot lie. So you can trust and stand on what his word says. He's willing to do for you. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. You have to get into the book to learn of him. He says, my yoke is easy. The way of holiness is not a hard life. Not when it's a submitted life, a committed life. You commit your ways unto him. And when you do, he'll be your partner. He'll be a partner that won't step out when things get rough. But when it gets rough, he'll get closer. He's nigh unto them that are broken heart and a contrite spirit. If your heart is broken, God is right there to heal the brokenness. Wherever it is in your life, God is there. He was there all of the time. He's your victory. He's your deliverance. But you have to know that. And the only way you know that is that you prepare yourself through the reading of his word, through the assembling of yourselves in church. We don't just come to church to just sit. We come to church to learn of the Lord. That's why this place is here, this beautiful edifice was not built just to be beautiful, but it is the hope and prayer of the pastor here 
that this church is a lighthouse, the hospital for wayfarers, for those who don't know the Lord. And you know what I like about God? What he did for me, he'll do for you. The scripture says we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. There are some people here who have undertaken and gone through some of the same things that I have. And they can tell you it pays to serve Jesus. It pays to serve Jesus. Trust and obey. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. To those of you who have habits, I don't hardly think that there's a habit that I could name in here that God did not deliver from. Now, if you've got enough courage so that you may help somebody else who has the type of habit that you have and you don't mind being a witness for God, I want every cigarette smoker, ex-cigarette smoker to stand, every snuff dipper, every wine drinker, every hole monger. Now, don't sit there too long now because you did something. I want every sinner who knew that if it were not for the saving grace of Jesus Christ, you'd be on your way to hell. Hallelujah. These are the witnesses that we have that God will keep you if you want to be kept. There's nothing too hard for God. God will be anything and everything that you want him to be. And I praise him. I thank him. I bless his name for salvation. You didn't have to do it, but you cleaned me up, put my feet, leading me in the right direction, and I praise you for it. God, I wasn't worthy. While I was yet sinner, you died for my sin, and I thank you, and I thank you. Let's bless him, and I thank you, and I thank you for your mercies. New every morning. Great is the faithfulness of God. He's a faithful God, saints. You can trust him. He's a faithful God. He's a faithful God. And whatever you need, now I'm asking you, everybody who want to leave, leave. Then we're going to have altar service and have some church in here. If you're in a hurry, just go right on. God bless you. But those of us who are left here, we are going to have some serious church in here. Because God came here today to meet us and to meet our needs, to mend us where we are broken, to lift us up where we are falling down. And we say, Lord, do it. Do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. Touch me again, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you, oh God, for these that are assembled here. And I pray, oh God, that they can take some of what I said, apply it, and want to be like you. We want to be like Jesus. Oh, how I want to be like him. Because I want to see him face to face. I want to meet him in peace. Praise God, wherever I am, should he come, I want to be ready. And I thank him now. And I bless him now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Right now, we thank you for your saints. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your way in the name of Jesus. Now I ask now, if there is anyone present that don't know the Lord, if you don't know the Lord, then you please come forward. The door of the church is open. If you don't know the Lord, praise the name of Jesus. He's waiting. Come to Jesus now in the name of Jesus. Come to Jesus now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just now. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus. Come on, would you come? Praise God, praise God. Come to Jesus. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you just now. He will save you. He will save you. Won't you come? Is there one? Perhaps you're already saved. And you know the Lord and your pardon of your sin. And you want to make this place your church home. 
Don't leave today if you don't know the Lord. We don't beg or ask that you just have to join this church. But if you feel that the Lord has touched you on today, won't you come and just thank the Lord for his touch? Won't you come? Is there one? I'm going to ask all of those who feel like they know the Lord and the pardon of their sin to be seated. And those persons who feel that maybe I don't want to come, I just want prayer. Won't you come? Won't you come? Come to Jesus just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. Now heaven is happy, saints. Glory, glory. Glory, glory. Glory, glory. So you're just going to have to be bold. Ask the Lord to give you holy boldness and come now. Come now in the name of Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. Won't you come? Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Now, if the Lord were to break the sky and come right now, are you ready? Can you say, I'm ready? Can you say, I got my house in order, my things are fixed? Are you ready for his coming? You don't know the minute or the hour when he comes, so it behooves you to be ready. Amen. There's, there's no place for little saints in hell. It's just hell, whether you're young or old. You have to make your decision on today whom you will serve. Won't you serve God? He'll do you good. He'll be your everything. He'll take you through your every trouble and trial. Young folk, I know it's hard, but with God, you can make it. He's there to help you. Praise the name of Jesus. Won't you come, my brother? Bless the name of Jesus. Won't you come? Glory to God. Saints, help me praise Jesus. Help me lift Jesus. 
Glory to God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for these souls. Glory to God, we thank you now for these souls. Hallelujah. Heaven is happy now. Bless the name of Jesus. Won't you come? Is there another one? Won't you come? This time we're going to have our pastor come, give you the right hand of fellowship, and then you may go with the worship coordinator. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Let me say while these are standing here, uh, we've heard a very powerful message today. And I praise God for these souls who have come. And yet I sense in my spirit that there are at least 12 more persons whom the Lord has touched. It's a different day. It's Women's Day. It's not the general routine. And somehow the enemy is trying to cloud your mind and say, I'll wait till next Sunday or for a more convenient time. But all that you have is right now. Next Sunday is really not guaranteed to you. And while you are right now under conviction for the salvation of your soul, in your backslidden condition, knowing that you need to return to the Lord. And even you who are saved, and you know this is where God wants you to be. I want the other 12 of you to get up right now. Don't, don't wait. Get up now. Have the courage to get up now and make your way down the nearest aisle. The Lord is speaking to you, and you know who you are. Come on. Hallelujah. That's right, my sister. Come on. Come giving him praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Don't, don't wait on anybody else. Get up. Get up. Bless you, my sister. Hallelujah. And yet there are ten more. Come on, my sister. Bless you. Bless you. Nine more of you. Come on. Hallelujah. Here she comes. Eight more. Seven more. Six more. Five more. Three. Two. One. And here they are. Somebody ought to give God some praise. Hey, hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name. Oh, we bless your name. We bless your name. Come on and give him praise. Come on and give him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God praise in here now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, my soul magnify you. Bless the name of Jesus. Even now, you who are here on the altar, I'm going to send you with the superintendent Siggers, but... As I see the tears flowing, lift your hands in surrenderance to God and just tell the Lord, yes, Lord, I'm ready to surrender my life. I put myself on the altar before you. I'm surrendering to you right now. Come on, open your mouth and tell him, Lord, I'm surrendering to you right now. Hallelujah. 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 That's right. Go ahead on and praise him. He's given you power against every sin you've committed. 
right now. A new life is beginning in you right now. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, my soul delight in you, Jesus. Bless your name. Bless your name. All saints, come on and praise him. Catch a hold to the praise. Come on and lift them up. Lift up those praises. Lift them up. He'll touch you while you're praising him. Hallelujah. He'll break your shackles while you're praising him. He'll heal you while you're praising him. He'll deliver you while you're praising him. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to Jesus. Oh, my soul delight in you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank. I thank you, Lord. 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 Yes, 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 yes. I thank you, Lord. Come on and ring it out. I thank you, Lord. Woo! I thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Ah, thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your touch. Thank you for a mind to live for you. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. He'll fill you while you're thanking. He'll baptize you in the Holy Ghost while you're giving him praise. Thank you. He'll heal your body while you're thanking. He'll deliver you while you're thanking him. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. 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 Oh. Hey. Thank you now. Hallelujah. Woo, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. For right now you've delivered. The habit is rebuked. In the name of Jesus, the sin is rebuked. And they are new creatures in Christ right now where they stand. Thank you. Listen, each one of you that came up, I just want to shake hands with you. You're going to follow Superintendent Siggers for further instruction. God bless you, young fella. Go to that gentleman over there. God bless you. I want you to follow suit. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Saints, you ought to be praising God. Bless you, my brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. God bless you, young lady. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Yes, I want you to follow on with this line here. Bless you. God bless you. God bless you. 
Oh, in the Lord, wonderful. God bless you. Welcome home. <laughs> Says she coming home. <laughs> Welcome home. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. 